everybody. Um, this week's video is a little bit different because my filming schedule has got completely and utterly messed up and it is not really possible for me to film, edit and upload all on the one day. So in order to get my schedule back on track and not leave you without a video for this week, um, instead of bringing the Dunciad as I had planned, I'm going to bring you Alexander Pope's Gulliver poems and bring the Dunciad next week. So you will you are getting twice the Pope for your money. Uh, remember, there is our shop if you would like to support us. It there is also our Redbubble shop. Our shop has our books and writing services. The Redbubble shop has over a hundred designs on multiple products. And as always, like, subscribe, comment, share. It really means a lot to us to be a, that you enjoy these videos. It means a lot to me. So thank you for that. And here are Alexander Pope's Gulliver Poems. Ode to Quinbus Flestrin, the Man Mountain, by Tititit Esquire, Poet Laureate to His Majesty of Lilliput, translated into English. In a maze lost I gaze, can our eyes reach thy sighs? May my lays, sweet with praise, worthy thee, worthy me. Muse inspire all thy fire, bard of old, of him told, when they said, Atlas's head, prepare, prop the skies, see and believe your eyes. See him stride valleys wide, over wood, over floods, when he treads mountains' heads, groan and shake, armies quake, lest his spurn overturn, man and steed, troops take heed, left and right, speed your flight, lest an host beneath his foot be lost. Turned aside from his hide, safe from wound, darts rebound, from his nose clouds he blows, when he speaks, thunder breaks. When he eats, famine thre threaten threats. When he drinks, Neptune shrinks. Nigh thy ear in mid-air, on thy hand, and let me stand. So shall I, lofty poet, touch the sky. The Lamentation of Glumdeklitch for the Loss of Grildig, a Pastoral. Soon as Glumda Klitsch missed her pleasing care, she wept, she blubbered, and she tore her hair. No British miss sincerer grief had known, her squirrel missing or her sparrow flown. She furled her sampler and hurled in her thread and stuck her needle into Grildig's bed, then spread her hands and with a bounce let fall her baby like the giant in Guildhall. In peals of thunder now she roars, and now she gently whimpers like a lowering cow. Yet lovely in her sorrow still appears, her locks dishevelled and her flood of tears. Seem like the lofty barn of some rich swain, when from the thatch drips fast a shower of rain. In vain she searched each cranny of the house, each gaping chink impervious to a mouse. Was it for this, she cried with daily care, within thy reach I set the vinegar and filled the cruet with the acid tide, while pepper water worms thy bait supplied. Where twined the silver reel round, around thy hook and all the little monsters of the brook, Sure in that lake he dropped my gillies drowned. She dragged the cur curate, but, but no grill dig found. 
Vain is thy courage, Gilly, vain thy boast, but little creature enterprise the most. Trembling I've seen thee dare the kitten's paw, nay mix with children as they played at tor, nor fear the marble as they bounding flew, marbles to them but rolling rocks to you. Why did I trust thee with that giddy youth, who from a page can ever learn the truth? Versed in court tricks, the money-loving boy To some lord's daughter sold the living toy Or rent him limb from limb in cruel play As children tear the wings of flies away From the place to place, sir, broad to binga, I'll roam And never will return to or bring thee home But who hath eyes to trace the passing wind? How then thy fairy footsteps can I find? Dost thou bewildered wander all alone in the green thicket of a mossy stone, or tumbled from the toadstool's slippery round, perhaps all maimed like grovelling on the ground? Dost thou embosomed in the lovely rose, or sunk within the peach's down repose, within the king cup if thy limbs are spread, or in the golden cowslip's velvet head? Or show me flora amidst those sweets, the flower where sleeps my grill jig in the fra fragrant bower. But ah, I fear thy little fancy robes on little females and on little loves, thy pygmy children and their, thy tiny spouse, the baby playthings that adorn thine house. Doors, windows, chimneys, and the spacious rooms, equal in size to cells of honeycombs. Hast thou for these now ventured from the shore, thy bark a bean shell and thy straw an oar? Or in thy box now bonding on the main, now bounding on the main, shall I ne'er bear thyself and house again? And shall I let thee on my hand no more To see thee leap the lines and traverse o'er My spacious palm of statue scarce a span Mimic the actions of a real man. No more behold thee turn my watcher's key As seamen at a captain's capstan anchor's way. How wert thou want to walk with cautious tread A dish of tea like milk pail on thy head. How chase the mice might that bore thy cheese away and kept the rolling maggot at a bay. She spoke, but broken accents stopped her voice. Soft as the speaking trumpet's mellow noise, she sobbed a, so a storm and wiped her flowering eyes, which seemed like two broad suns in misty skies. Oh, squander not thy grief, thy those tears command to weep upon our cod in newfound land, and plenteous pickles shall preserve the fish, and Europe taste thy sorrow in her dish. To Mr. Lemuel Gulliver, the grateful address of the unhappy Winhams now in slavery and bondage in England. To thee, we wretcheds of the Winham band, condemned to labour in a barbarous land, return our thanks, accept our humble lays, and let each great, grateful Winham nay thy praise. O oh, happy Yahoo, purged from human crimes, by thy sweet sojourns in those virtuous climes, where reign our sires, there to thy country's shame, reason you found, and virtue were the same. Thy pre their precepts raised the prejudice of youth, and even a Yahoo learned to love the love of truth. Art thou first who did the coast explore? Did never Yahoos tread that ground before? Yes, thousands, but in pity to their kind, or swayed by envy or through pride of mind, they hid their knowledge of a nobler race, which owned would all their sires and sons disgrace. You, like the Samaria, visit lands unknown, and by their wiser mortal morals mend your own. Thus Orpheus travelled to reform his kind, came back and tamed the brutes he left behind. You went, you saw, you heard, with virtue fraught, then spread those morals which the Winham taught. 
Our labours here must touch thy generous heart to see us strain before the coach and cart, compelled to run each knavish jockey's heart, subservient to Newmark's annual chart, cheat. With what reluctance do we lawyers bear to fleece their country clients twice a year, or manage in your schools for flops to ride, for fops to ride, how foam, how fret beneath the load of pride. Yes, we are slaves, but yet by reason's force have learned to burn, bear out, bear misfortunes like a horse. Oh, would the stars to ease my bonds ordain that gentle Gulliver might guide my reign. Safe I would bear him to his journey's end, for tis a pleasure to support a friend. But if my life be doomed to serve the bad, oh, mayest thou never want an easy pad. Mary Gulliver to Captain Lemuel Gulliver, an epistle. The captain, some time after his return, being retired to Mr. Simpson's in the country, Mrs. G Gulliver apprehended from his late behaviour some estrangement of his affections, writes him the following espalating, espil soothing and tenderly, com tenderly complaining epistle. Welcome thrice welcome to thy native place. What touch me not, what shun a wife's embrace? Have I for this thy tedious absence borne, and walked and wished whole nights for thy return? In five long years I took no second spouse, what red if wife so long have kept her vows. Your eyes, your nose, inconsistency betray, your nose you stop, your eyes you turn away. Tis said that thou shouldest cleave unto thy wife, Thou didst cleave, and I could cleave for life. Hear and rent, hark how thou thy children moan, Be kind at least to these, they are thy own. Behold and count them all, secure to find, The honest number that you left behind. See how they pat thee with their pretty paws. Why start you, are they snakes, or have they claws? Thy Christian seed, our mutual flesh and bone, be kind at least to these, they are thy own. Biddle like thee, thou might's Indi farthest India road. He changed his country, but retained his love. There's Captain Parnell, absent half his life, come back and is the kinder to his wife. Yet Panel's wife is brown compared to me, and Mistress Biddle sure is fifty-three. Not touch me, never neighbour called me slut. No, it was Fip, Fipnap's dame more sweet in Lilliput. I've no red hair to breathe an odious fume. At least thy consort's cleaner than thy groom. Why then that dirty stable boy thy care? What means those visits to the sorrel mare? Say, by what witchcraft or what demon led, prefers thou litter to the marriage bed? Some say the devil himself is in that mare. If so, our deem sh dean should dr shall drive him forth by prayer. Some think you mad, some think you are possessed, that bedlam and clean straw would s will suit you best. Vain means, alas, this frenzy to appease. That straw, that straw would heighten the disease. My bed, the scene of all our former joys, witness two lovely girls, two lovely boys. Alone I press in dreams, I call my dear, I stretch my hand, no Gulliver is there. I wake, I rise, and shivering with the frost, search all the house, my Gulliver is lost. Forth in the street I rush with frantic cries, the windows open, and all the, all the neighbours rise. Where sleeps my govern Gulliver? Oh, tell me where. The ants, the neighbours answer with the sorrel mare. At early morn I to the market haste, studious in everything to please thy taste. A curious fowl and sparrowgrass I choose, for I remember you were fond of those. Three shillings cost the first, the last seven grouts. Sullen you turned from both and called for oats. 
Others bring goods and treasures to their houses, some to deck their pretty babes and spouses. My only token was a cup-like horn that made of nothing but a lady's corn. Tis not for that I grieve, oh, tis to see. The groom and sorrel mare preferred to me. These for some moments when you deign to quit and at due distance sweet discourse admit. Tis all my pleasure thy past toils to know, for pleased remembrance build delight on woe. At every danger pants thy consort's breast, and gaping infants squall to hear the rest. How did I remember? Did I tremble when by thousands bound I saw thee stretched on Lilliputan ground, when scaling armies climbed up every path, part, and each step they trod I felt upon my heart. But when thy torrent quenched the dreadful blaze, king, queen, and nation staring with amaze, full in my view how all my husband came, and what extinguished theirs increased my flame. Those spectacles ordained thine eyes to save, were once my present, I love what armour gave. Love that armour gave. How did I mourn the at Bol Bolgram's decree? For when he signed thy death, he sentenced me. When folks might see thee all the country round for sixpence, I'd have given a thousand pound. Lord, when the giant babe, that head of thine, got in his mouth, my heart was up in mine. When in the marrow bone I see thee rammed, or on the housetop by the monkey crammed, the piteous images renew my pain, and all thy danger I weep o'er again. But in the maiden's nipple when you rid, pray heaven, twas all wanton maiden did. Glum dull clitch too, I, with thee I mourn her case. Heaven guard the gentle girl from all disgrace. Oh, may the king that one neglect forgive, and pardon the fault, pardon her the fault by which I live. Was there no other way to set him free? My life, alas, I fear, proved death to thee. Oh, teach, teach me, dear, new words to speak my flame. Teach me to woo thee by thy best loved name. Whether the style of gr grill dig please thee most, so called on broader Bingen's stupendous coast, when on the monarch's alp ample hand you sate and hollered in his ear intrigues of state, or Quimbus Flestron more endearments bring, when like a mountain you look down on kings, if Ducal Nardak Lilliputan peer, or Glumdi Glum Glum's humbler title soothe thy ear. Nay, would kind Jove my organs to dispose, to him harmonious Winnem through the nose. I'd call thee Winnem that sound, high-sounding name. Thy children's noses all should twang the same. So might I find my loving spouse, of course, endured with all the virtues of a horse. The words of the King of Broderbingen as he held Captain Gulliver between his finger and thumb for the inspection of the sages and learned men of the court. In miniature see nature's power appear, which wings the sun-born insects of the air, which frames the harvest bug too small for sight, and forms the bones and muscles of the mite. Here view him stretch, the microscope explains that the blood circling flows in humans' veins. See in the tube he pants and sprawling lies, stretched his little hand and rolls his eyes. Smit with his country's love, I've heard him prate of laws and manners in his pygmy state. By travel, generous souls enlarge the mind, which homebred pre preposition had confined. Yet will he boast of many regions known, but still with partial love extol his own. He talks of senates and of courtly tribes, admires their ardour but forgets their bribes, of hireling lawyers tells the just decree, applauds their eloquence but sinks their fees. 
Yet who his country's partial love can blame to show some virtue to conceal its shame? The world's the native city of the wise. He sees his Britain with a mother's eyes, softens defects and heightens all its charms, calls it the seat of empire, arts and arms. Fond of his hillock island, his narrow mind, thinks worth wit learning to that spot confined. Thus ants who for a grain employ their cares think all the business of the earth is theirs. Thus honeycombs seen palaces to bees and might imagine all the world a cheese. Then when pride in some such contemptuous beings lies in beetles, Britons, bugs and butterflies, shall we like reptiles glory in conceit, humility's the virtue of the great. So I hope that you enjoyed Alexander Pope's Gulliver poems. Um, as I said at the beginning, we will be doing the Duncia next. Uh, Her Ladyship will be bringing that for next week. Um, but it was really important for me to get my filming schedule back together because otherwise I was going to go crazy. So thank you for allowing that this week with the Pope poems. Uh, they were actually much easier to read out than I thought that they would be. Um, once you get your tongue around Pope's uh, rhythms, they're actually quite readable and light. So uh, I hope that you enjoyed them as much as I did. And we will all be back next week with a proper video. So we'll see you then. Thank you. Bye. If you would like to support this channel, come across to the Black Hockey Press website www.blackhockeypress.com.au where you will find books and other writing services to help with your writing. <laughs>